Good afternoon. Uh, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on July 25th, uh, 2024. This meeting is being recorded. My name is Elizabeth Silver and I'm here um, with Maureen Scanlon and Sherry Taylor, who are members of the Zoning Board and Nathan Chung, who is our staff liaison to the um, planning department, excuse me, department. Uh, before we get started, I know we have one hearing, uh, 5.30 hearing. Before that, we need to see whether or not there are any public comments, but not seeing anybody in the meeting, uh, uh, just the applicant for the 5.30 hearing. I think we can move right into that, right? Are you seeing anyone that we're not seeing, Nathan? Okay. No, great. Nobody else. Okay. So this is a hearing for a special permit to convert a non-conforming carport to a living area at 49 Man Terrace in Florence, map ID 23A-241. Um, this was published on 7-11 and 7-18-2024. Um, and we are having this uh, hearing for a special permit. Uh, th that means that we need a supermajority vote of three members to approve this request. Um, it's a discretionary permit and the board must find for our standard that what appears to be a further encroachment of the non-conforming side setback due to converting a carport to a living area is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming aspects of the house. So we can proceed. Um, I see only one person on behalf of the applicant. I do want to disclose, I know the applicant not recently from many, many years ago, just, um, you know, in passing <laughs> pretty much, but I just wanted to get that on the record and haven't seen her for probably 15 or more years. So just to, just to have everything above board. And I assume that there's no problem with my going forward. I don't need to recuse myself, but I just wanted that on the record. So um, could you please introduce yourself and explain? Uh, before the we do that, please, Elizabeth, uh, yeah. this is Sherry Taylor. I yeah. would like to also say that the person who is applying for this was a tenant of mine. She moved out in 2017. So it's been over seven years. I do not know her personally, other than the fact that she paid her rent. And uh, I don't see it as a conflict, but I want to also disclose it. Yeah. And, and this is somebody who I understand, I think, is a doc and, and probably is known by a number of people in a fairly um, general capacity, but not as a close person. So. Um, all right, so if we can proceed, um, Jamie, I don't know your last name, if you could give that to us as you explain the project to us. I think you can assume that we've reviewed your materials and we have a sense of, a good sense of what the project is, but um, it would be good to hear from you and then we can ask you any questions that we have about it, so. Sure, uh, yeah, sorry. Well, last name is Callan, C-A-L-L-A-N. Great. And, um, so you've reviewed the material. So I, um, I'm, I'm Jennifer's domestic partner as well as the contractor. Okay. So uh, I have two roles here. Um, and uh, this, so the, the intention, intention here is to, you know, just obviously seek approval to expand the living space into here. The, the kitchen is right off of this space. And, the, and historically since Jennifer, um, has owned the house. This place has been used as a um, like an outdoor patio space. There's cars aren't parked in here, or they could be, but they're it's it's used as a seating area, and um, and it is very close to the property line. And and we know the neighbors and talk with them and have discussed this um, discusses with them, and they they have no objections. I believe. Um, Audra said that she had sent an email. I don't know if you received that. We, we did get a letter from your okay. neighbors on the, that's the east side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we've discussed it with some other neighbors on the street, but they're the ones that really would be impacted um, by this. And in our sense um, is that it actually would be more of a positive impact because 
the way I don't know about previous owners, but the way it is, it's you're kind of right on top of the property line. And by enclosing it, you give a little more privacy um, to the neighbors. Um, so that's uh, that's the intention. Um, and, it, you know, if if approved, then, you know, we'd proceed. There's no, you know, we're waiting for this and then we would have to see. We don't know if this would be an immediate plan or it would be something that would uh, be taking place next year. Uh, we certainly wouldn't be starting it right away. Um, and uh, uh, I guess the other thing is, you know, what came up in this review, which we were unaware of, was that uh, I guess there's one illegal curb cut in there. So the parking space and reallocating that, um, the, the we were unaware of that. There was no record from the previous owner. So, um, so that uh, seemed fine to us to reconfigure it. It's a little awkward as is with the parking anyway. So um, there, there is plenty of room on the other side of the property to do that. And I don't know if the drawings clearly illustrated that. I'm, uh, I'm not a master on the SketchUp. So I was trying to just give the basic idea and hopefully the dimensions. So if you have any questions about that, you can try and address them. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there will be, but initially, uh, you know, I know that the curb cuts was a concern in terms of, you know, the, the rules in Northampton. Um, and you say there's plenty of room. And I just wanted to double check with Nathan about that because from the only couple of pictures that I think we have, it's not clear to me how you would make two spaces to the right of, well, to the west of the house, mm -hmm. right as you're looking at it, that don't um, bump up against uh, any setback issues. So Nathan, is there, could you sort of fill us in and and maybe Jamie can talk to that piece? Yes, and do you want me to share the screen? Yes, please. Okay. That would be great, Nathan. Yeah. Here we go, do you, yeah, do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, so um, dimensionally, I do understand it looks a little tight, but from the zoning ordinance, it is this new proposal. So basically, um, the the parking space that's currently on the on the right left side, or really the east, um, will move to the west. Or I'll just use left and right references here. So the parking space right now, there's one space on the left. And there's a space on the right, and in this new proposal, uh, the the left side parking space will go away along with the curb cut, and then the right side one will have two spaces. And from zoning, it would work uh, because uh, first of all, there is no um, setback requirement for driveways, so there is a setback requirement for carports and parking garages, but not um, open uh, open uh, open driveways. Ooh. And uh, yeah, yes, it, sometimes people are surprised, but uh, there is no minimum setback requirement. Of course, it's a good idea to have a little bit of space and the applicant is showing two feet of space. And the other thing is the standard dimension for a parking space is uh, 8.5 feet by 18 feet. So the applicant, you know, they, sh they show it to be 20 feet wide and then uh, um, so, you know, you can fit, uh, I mean, you, you can fit two spaces there because 8.5 times two, is, I mean, sorry, um, 8.5 times two is 17. So you can put side, um, two spaces and then it's slightly longer than um, 18, 18 feet. So the length is also fine. And one thing the applicant, which I explained and the applicant implemented is that um, the parking space needs to be uh, um, set back from the front lot line by five feet at least. So you really need a 23 feet of length and the applicant indicated 25 feet here. So it's it gives a little bit of buffer. And um, so um, I guess uh, one thing is uh, if it's spaces assigned to the same um, unit, same dwelling unit, and this is a single family unit. So if it's assigned to the same unit, cars can block each other as long as it's assigned to the same unit. So it might, it does look, you know, it might be a little bit tight uh, for cars to exit, but the um, owners are allowed to do that as long as the parking space is assigned to two spaces. So they, they can figure out a way to uh, maneuver and coordinate and maneuver uh, two cars out of the space. Okay, so as long as 
that is not an issue or concern, then the only thing that we're considering now is whether um, decreasing the side setback, which it, increasing the nonconformity, which it would be done with this change of use, is um, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Is that accurate? Yes. And okay. uh, um, yeah, and you can ask the applicant for clarification and whether it will be an actual physical, you can ask the applicant for, for clarification, whether it will be a physical change to the setback, slightly worsening, or the physical setback will stay the same, or, you know, it, or it's just that the uh, conversion, you know, creates a, a, a legal a worsening of nonconformity because um, the setbacks required for living space is uh, uh, greater than the setbacks for carports. Yeah, uh, and I'll just speak really quickly. Uh, uh, just say that. Um, Sorry. Uh, there's no. Uh, so it 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 would not get worse. The encroachment wouldn't get worse. What we measured from sort of the farthest protrusion of the building and enclosing it would actually be set in you know a few inches from from that so we wouldn't be expand making that smaller but but it would stay you know essentially the same there with a with a three foot um yes except under the current setup where it's considered a carport the setback that's allowed for a carport is different than the setback for part of a residential unit. So I, I you're, see, even right. if it's gonna stay the same or even come in a little bit, you're still increasing the nonconformity. Right. So that's right. why we have to come into the picture now and just make sure that there are no other issues and it's not less detrimental to the neighborhood. So, right. um, or it is uh, whatever, substantial. Yes, I, I less understand. Detrimental, yeah. so. Okay, so um, questions for- yeah. I do. I have a couple of questions. Could you put the picture back up, Nathan, so I can look at it as I'm speaking? Oh, yes. Uh, one second. There's also a picture, I don't know if you saw it, Sherry, of the house, not just the sketch, but of the house itself. I did see the house, but okay. I don't have the sketch of okay. the house. So my question is, so when I look at the gray that was the carport and is going to be converted, it looks like it's longer. I mean, in other words, are they extending it back also? I, I don't know how far that carport went. Before. Oh, I, I see. Uh, I think what I was trying to illustrate was um, egress changing to the rear of the house. And, Got it. and that would be, a, that's just supposed to be sort of like a little uh, landing area for stairs to get down to the um, to the low, lower level because it's a the the lot slopes and so on the back of the house you're you're six or seven feet above grade um, at that point um, so but yeah and it's a little clunky looking from that drawing but so the actual structure wouldn't be expanding but there needs to be um, some new some new egress there. Yeah. So there yeah. would not be an egress on the side of your neighbors. No, door. no, no. Okay. All right. And um, there... for some reason, I did not get a copy of this neighbor's letter. I'm assuming you read it, Elizabeth, and that it's positive. Yeah, that's one sentence. Yeah. I, totally I read it supportive. as well, Sherry. Yeah. Okay. It's totally supportive. It's just it's a supportive. sentence yeah. or two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very it, brief to the point and supportive. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Which we appreciate. And, and I know you have another question, at least, Sherry, but my, I have one on that same topic right okay. now. Um, uh, in the sketch, Jamie, I think what prompted me to have a similar question to Sherry is that where the car, current carport is, that gray area in your sketch, it has this horizontal line halfway through. So it's like two squares. So that made me think you were ex increasing it right the floor area the foot area of the carport what, what is that horizontal i i don't know i think that was just a mistake okay okay so that's the, actually <laughs> yeah. the footprint of the carport that entire uh, gray section the the, the entire yeah the entire gray section the dark gray which are just a shingles the the software uses a material to try and look like asphalt shingles so it's like we're mm -hmm. looking at the roof there yeah, yeah. and then the lighter gray off the back would be it's just sort of to try and illustrate some kind of a a landing area so that if you had egress going out the back, 
you know, you 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 wouldn't ha you would have something to land on to, not just stairs coming right up to a uh, to the door there. Okay. Um, that that line is uh, just looks like a mistake. Okay, so there's not an increase in square footage. No. From what the carport is to what the one story structure will be, and it is one story, right? What you're Co correct. Like? Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Okay. Thank you. That's my part yep. of that question. Any other questions? I I do have one regarding the parking. Um, yeah. Because doing a site visit, I was like, how the heck are you going to fit two spots there, right? Because <laughs> the one car you have there right now, it's kind of, you know, my size compact car. Right? Yeah. And it, it pretty much fills the spot. And I really appreciate Nathan's clarification that um maneuvering when you're a single uh, you know single uh family home you can deal with the logistics of maneuvering the cars around yourself which right. and you're going to you're thinking if you have two cars there you're going to park them perpendicular to the street right not parallel to the street so you'll pull Correct. Them. there's no room to do the turnaround there so right. is there something i'm missing about why you would not just request a full curb cut the whole way uh i'm glad you asked that no i so when i drew this it was i was just sort of putting what's there as the curb cut and trying yeah. to make a graceful curve to illustrate it and i had the same thought was and i'm looking at you know other people on the street because it's it's sort of a common issue on the street most people have this a similar type of setup and and so i was curious whether well could we just make it 20 feet wide the curb cut is there a is there a zoning issue with that um right. and then and then the other would be well if for some reason we didn't want that because we we're trying to avoid kind of a parking lot in the front yard is making that making that radius a little uh more user friendly for getting in there um yeah uh, but yeah no it's awkward i mean it's not ideal the other piece is that what was probably not evident from a site visit is that we would have to cut back some of the landscaping that's there and cut into the gardens mm -hmm, on the front mm -hmm. to make this. So it comes up within a couple feet of the house. Right, and, uh, right. Yeah, it's, it's not ideal. Um, but it's, uh, it, yeah, I mean, I also I have a question for Nathan on. I, I was unclear about how much parking the you know the parking uh, proposal is part of our jurisdiction or not. And also there is a five foot setback you indicated. So to, if the cars are only going to be five feet back from the road or at least five feet back from the road, can the driveway itself, you know, could they in fact make that uh, curb cut the entire width? It just seems like it would be in a way safer for traffic on what's close to a kind of very tricky corner. On a street yes. that has virtually no traffic. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I almost somebody almost hit me when I went to look do the site visit today because they were going the wrong way on the one way uh. street. So I reached the corner and there's somebody right in my face. So I <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, this is a corner and there's no visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Nathan, yeah. I think the question is, can they make the curb cut longer? Up um, to up to fifteen feet wide. That's the maximum for residences. So 15 feet. I I, I mean, I didn't inquire into the applicant's decision on why he made, why they made it 10, you know, that's a very personal decision. And I mean, 10 feet narrower curve because, you know, obviously less pavement and less uh, less uh, drainage issues. But I, you know, I, I think if the applicant thinks actually 15 feet is better, uh, and perhaps that, I mean, I think they can just update that here. They can maybe make, make a statement and update it here. Yeah, I, I I didn't inquire as to the rationale for 10 feet, I, I'll be honest, but yeah, you can be up to 15 feet for a residential area. And as long as, you know, what Nathan is saying is that this is, you know, legal under the, the city ordinances, then, you know, I think that would be up to the owners. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know the curb cut designs and it's it's on the payment adding new payment and you know making curb cut update that's under the jurisdiction jurisdiction of DPW, and uh, so I mean you know you I think you, we don't need to like you know, put detailed requirements or conditions on what the dimension of the curb cut 
and uh, the parking should be as long as it's complying with zoning. Uh, and the other thing is in relation to the other part of Maureen's question about parking, um, I mean, certain parking conditions or requirements, maybe the board can put in uh, if it's directly related to the main matter at hand, which is the enclosure, but uh, you cannot allow for um, the parking non-conformities to get worse than what is proposed. That's one of the things that's not in the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So either if you have a non-conformity, the zoning board can allow it to stay at the same level of non-conformity or make it conforming, but you can't make it, allow them to make it worse. So they could go up to the 15 feet on the curb cut. Yeah, that's true. And, and we could acknowledge that in the in the um, motion. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Or could yeah. we simply I mean, say that it's contingent on the parking uh, complying with DPW requirements? Right. And well, it already ha it's already compliant. Right. You mean so? So you mean if it's you want to increase it? Yeah. Sure. I mean, well, yeah, we do that yeah, a I lot. That we hear about. We're here really about the, the carport, about the changing. I, the, I I think it's a great point. Port, I mean, I I yeah. certainly think that we we would try to increase it to fifteen feet to make it easy to maneuver there um, and get in there. I don't think that would have a huge impact on the overall curb appeal and landscaping. And like I said, you know, several people have different configurations here on the street and. Um, and what we're trying to avoid is, you know, just sort of a, a used car lot, you know, just randomly parking on the front lawn there. So. Right. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and Nathan, um, DPW is fine with this. Yeah. All DPW this? is fine with the change. Okay. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're fine with the, uh, of course they still have to get a DPW permit after this, um, let's see if the board approves it, but yeah, they're, they're fine. Uh, they're right. fine. So they're back up anyway. So. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No. Um, Jamie, is there anything else you want to say before we close the public hearings part? Because once we do that, you're not allowed to speak any longer. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I think we uh, have a good picture. Uh, Nathan, did you have something you wanted to yeah, say? Yeah, I just want to clarify. So, um, and I guess it's for both the board and Jamie. So, um, Jamie, are you? would you like to make the driveway uh, with 15, the curb cut with 15 feet? If uh, that's a better option for you, just want to clarify. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was just uh, I was just typing our findings in the written decision something about, um, you know, applicant might want to um, you know want to make the um, make the curb cut uh, as wide as possible, a lot as allowed by zoning and DPW um, um, DPW requirements, something okay. along that line. Great. Thank you. All right. Do we? I'm sorry. Right. Actually, I have one more question for Nathan. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. As Jamie was explaining, that they're just trying to find out if they can do this, right? And that they may not uh, take this on for some time. Is there a time limit on this? And would they have to come before us when this, if this should ex like exceed that time limit? Thank you. It's three years. I mean, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, once the permit is granted, you gotta exercise. You gotta start exercising it within three years. Doesn't mean you have to finish it in three years. You just gotta start exercising it within three years. I'm great at starting projects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, okay. That's, that's it. great. Thank Thank you for asking that. I had that question and forgot. <laughs> yes. Um. All right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Okay, roll call, Nathan. By roll call, um, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And Sherry? Yes. Okay. And uh, does somebody want to take a, a, is there any discussion? Okay, stab at a motion. My perspective. Uh, I can move that we, well, we move to close the hearing. We c Can we move now to vote on it? We have to make the motion. We we just voted on closing the hearing. Yes. And now we need a motion on the request for the special permit. Okay, so I can do that. Um, I um, move that we make a we take a vote on um, approving the special permit, the discretionary permit by Jamie Callen for. If I said your last name correctly, I'm sorry. I don't have it back up in front of me. For. Um, 
converting a non-conforming carport to a living area at 49 Man Terrace, map ID 23A-241. And uh, that based on this uh, further encroachment of the non-conforming side setback, not substantially being more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing aspects of the house. And do we want to add to that, that the egress will be um, in the back as a condition? Well, I would say as submitted by the plan, by the floor plan. Other pieces, since other pieces will probably get shifted, I just want, you know, wondered if we might want to be explicit about that piece. Since, you know, since it looks like the driveway is going to um, expand, we might as well be specific about the egress. Sure. And as, uh, as proposed in the new plan, the second egress moving from the side to the back of the house, coming off uh, landing from this new addition, from this new uh, enclosure. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? I think maybe for formality, it might be good to bore for bore for bore for direct, like a briefly um, just mention why it's not substantially more detrimental. Okay, I think I could do that. Um, I think that this is an improvement in the property and um, for the neighborhood, for the visual. Um, so I think improving the property um, is is not just less detrimental to the neighborhood, um, it is beneficial to the neighborhood. Yes, and reducing from two curb cuts to one will also improve traffic flow. Thank you, yep. And it increases the privacy of the neighbors. Yep. Good, all right, ready for a vote? Yeah. Okay, Nathan. Okay, by roll call, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And Sherry? Yes. Great. Congratulations. Don't wait three years. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully <laughs> you're motivated. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's great. So there is a um there's an appeal period for this or um, yes, you wanna... yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a 20 day appeal period way uh, required by state law once I file it and yep. I'll try to file it within a week. Um, and I can email you and talk with you some more details after the hearing about the next steps. But then okay. so you have to also apply for a DPW permit for the curb cut changes. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think you can do that concurrently, but we'll we'll I okay. can help you discuss the details. Yeah. So, yeah, All right. yeah well, 20, 20 days, 20 days of waiting, and then you can yeah. get a building permit and get the enclosure project started. That's right. We have plenty to keep us busy until then. Uh, all, right. all right. Well, thank you very Congrats. much for your. Sure. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. Thank Good you. Luck. Okay. okay. Thank Take you. Care. Bye, bye bye. All right. And we have uh, one set of minutes from June 27th. Is there a motion or is there any corrections? Uh, I didn't personally see any corrections when I read it, so I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Is there a second? Oh, second. Okay. Uh, any, okay. any issues, anyone? I read through it. I thought they were fine. I, I have to say, I applaud Nathan for this marathon set of minutes. <laughs> this, uh, thank you. Thank you. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're ready for a vote on these minutes. Right, thank you. Um, by roll call. Um, oh, sorry. And remind me, who was the one who made the motion to approve the minutes? I did, Sherry. Okay, Sherry. Sherry made motion. Sorry, and uh, and then it was Maureen who seconded, right? Yes. Okay. So by roll call, uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, Maureen. Yes. And Sherry. Yes. Okay, unanimous. Great. So. Um... Do we want to talk about the August meeting or do a motion to adjourn first? I guess we should talk about the August meeting. I'll just I, I'll just be very quick about it. Um, I there was an applicant, a business owner who was applying possibly, but they haven't done it yet. So basically, we have no hearings in August, neither on on the second or fourth week. I, I think okay. we decided on the second week, but so no no hearings at all for August. And in between now and then, maybe something will come in for the September hearing, but not right now. We don't have anything. 
Okay, that would be September 12th. Right? Yes, that's okay. September 12th. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, that's nice. Not to we have to worry about August. Um, all right. Motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn this meeting. Jerry. I'll second it. Okay. okay. Roll call. By roll call, Elizabeth. Yes. Maureen. Yes. And Sherry. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Thank you all. Have a great summer.